Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I think you you already all uh, seeing my screen. I said, right? Uh, you all see, see my screen? Yes, we can see the screen. Sure. Cool. So yeah, we will we'll go together with through chapter fifteen and it's going to talk about reactive building blocks. Um our learning objective would be um uh, the building blocks of reactive uh, of reactivity. And um we have three building blocks, reactive values, reactive expressions, and observers. We already talked about uh, the reactive values and expression before, but we didn't dive deeper into the observers. And that's what uh, what been asked by Omer uh, before, uh, how the observers is working in the, in the when we're building the reactive graph. So we will touch on this uh, in this chapter. And, um, all, as well, we uh, how these tools are built from the low-level functions, observe and isolate, um, uh, and how error messages signal condition move on reactive graph, and what shiny reactive values are built from, and um, how it's what is the reference semantics uh, of uh, of them. Uh, the reference semantics we'll talk about different semantic uh, uh, pre uh, sooner, but. Uh, these are the objective of this chapter. Um, this is a very good chapter to discuss how how reactivity works in Chinese because uh, the building blocks it, it trying to get go into the lower level uh, functionality that is used or wrapped in the functionality the interface that we are dealing with, um, which is observe and isolate in this case. But um, yeah. So it's very interesting chapter, and I am excited to discuss all the things about it. Okay, so so yeah, this type we have different type of active values. We don't touch on the the, the types of it. Uh, we have a we 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 normally use that the single reactive value, but there is a lot of um, there is a lot of uh. uh of other kind of reactive value. In this case, we have a reactive values for lists. And uh, what is, uh, let's, let's write it here. OK, we have this with an S uh, as a plus. And this, this is the difference, a single reactive value and a list of reactive values together. Uh, this could be useful if you have like this kind of chunk or object that ha you want to be uh, all over all the values that stored in it uh, are reactive, reactive values, and any change happen to these values, the reactive uh, cycle or reactive graph is rebuilt. You want it to, re to rebuild, rebuild itself when it, when any of its dependencies, when which is in this case the reactive values, uh, changes. Um, so yeah, um, the definition is like this, the same as uh, uh, as we know this. We we discuss this uh, this kind of syntax in the chapter three. But in uh, in this case, when in the list reactive values, we have the reactive values for a and b. A is one and b is two. And now we could access these values through the same way that we access we accessing objects in in R, um, and yeah, x x dollar sign a and x dollar sign b. We are accessing it, accessing it. and to uh, assign values to it, we we doing the same uh, as again the active um, uh, as normal R uh, objects. Um, so yeah, they have its uh, its use case. Let's go more into the details of copy copy on modify semantics. So normal R is doing this kind of copy and modify kind of uh, behind the scene where you when if you create an object with some value, okay, and you copy the same value on a new object, this, uh, this 
okay uh this new object uh, okay let's... yeah then if you modify the original object that won't change the value of the original object um uh sorry not that that won't if you modify the the new object uh, we, this, that will not modify the, uh, the the original object and that's what that's because um it creates a ready uh, like it uh, it allocate different uh memory location for each one when it's create a new object so it separates the values from the reference so it's not like a pointer that one point like uh, an x1 is pointing to the x2 and both of them are pointing to the the value in the in the memory but uh, x2 and x1 is have different location so if if one uh, in memory so if one of them are changed it doesn't depend on each one another um so yeah that's that's copy or modify semantics and it exists in i think uh, a lot of programming languages uh, same similarly at all as R. And um, yeah, so here, if we create a list and a function to modify the element A of the list, uh, and we try to modify the, the, the X, um, the list within the function, and call this in, uh, invisible uh, to, sh to show this invisible or not. It's, it doesn't show the result. Or, yeah, it doesn't show the result. Okay. So yeah, this these example are not exist in the in the book itself. So the here it is here in the in the slides. Um okay. Okay. Um applying the function to the original list will return a new object, okay? And rather than modifying the original list. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, here we are, we having two objects for in the list and this function is only, um, only modifying A. So if you see here the result, you will see that uh, if we give un, uh, if if you apply function of an on x and uh, unlist it, it become a a changed with a new value and b still the same. Uh, if if we uh, if we like um, modifying the original one the original list, it will still the same uh, since we are not applying any functionality on it. Um, so it still keep the the original location still keep this kind of allocated memory location. That's what they try to show us here. Um, okay. So we have like this copy and modify and is different than in Shiny. Shiny has this kind of this, what is called reference semantics, which, which is like um, the opposite of that, of copy and modify. Uh, it, it really has this concrete or um, concrete reference where if you have the same va two values pointing to the same thing, then they are dependent on one another. And this kind of stuff is uh, is what all, all or the activity are about. Um, so let's... Let's see what is here. Let's say here, if you are, if you are working on the server function and you have this kind of library, shiny, uh, reactive console, uh, you can copy the value of reactive value to the new object with this, and assign it to another object. But if you change the original reactive variable, this will change as well the the new reactive uh, the new object that creates that holds the reactive value. So it's like it's kind of concrete or um, hard copy concept inside Shiny itself. Uh, they have this kind of uh, really uh, uh, concrete uh, reference for the values. So yeah, opposite as opposite of uh, copy and modify. 
And here we have this kind of semantics, again, reference semantics, but with R6, if you have, if you create a new object in R6, and this Y1 is a new class, R6 class, which having this kind of list and um, a new uh, a new object is created on, creating object on a fly, and uh, a new uh, and you copy that object into another object with the syntax. Um, you will find then if you modify the value of the new object, that will as well modify. Uh, then the original object also change. Uh, so we changed here B. So um, oh yeah the they have this kind of deep is false. So if deep is true, uh, it it will uh, it will changes the the A as well. Just that I, at least that that's what I think. The here we have A is one and B is one. Okay, the new object is created from this one, and then we submit Y one by two. Okay. Um. Clone function, yeah. So yeah, I didn't like. I, I'm not like ex have experience with R6. Uh, that's why I'm seeing here deep is false. I, I don't understand what what is meaning of it. Um, we have this deep copy and uh, soft copy kind of uh, uh, like concept in programming. So I don't know if it's, this is what it uh, refers to in R6. Um, R6 yeah. is a type of object-oriented programming, what we're referring yeah. to as notions of inheritance. Yeah, so, so what is what is the meaning of deep equals R C? If you don't want the inherited classes to also have those same values. Hmm, interesting. So you are, you are depend this deep value, or is it is it a, like um, a default uh, value that Created with every R6 uh, class? I'm not sure if there's a default value, but back here in Shiny, you want to affect the fewest number of uh, variables for your reactive stuff. Oh, interesting. Awesome. So, yeah, um, I, I think they, they are using this in the behind the scenes in Shiny itself. Mm -hmm. um, cool. So yeah, let's continue. Okay, if 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 a function changes the value of the original object, uh, then the copy also get changed. Okay, we have f, which is the, we defined it be, uh, before that changes the value of uh, y one. Uh, then the copy also get changed, which is here we have an eight is changed as well. Um, okay, we have a couple of focus sizes. But let's go into the the deep of, of, of the chapter because we have a lot to cover. Yeah, so we didn't talk about the uh, how 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 errors are being handled handled in Shiny. So here we are trying to um, let's open the book as well because here we it is just uh, very. Uh, Scroll into okay. So if we go into the the book itself and see, think here. Yeah, we have the errors. So reactive expression caches caches errors as well, the same way as the uh, caches values, and um, this is. This could be seen if we, with this example, uh, we have a reactive value uh, and we use a stop function to like simulating an error in the reactive. Uh, so here we, we have this kind of error inside the reactive when we call it. In the reactive console, error occurred at this time. And this is a, um, this is the error meshes that, that come from the stop function. Um, okay, if we wait two seconds, we can see that we get the same error as before. Uh, yeah, if we did the, the sleep again, I see when we get the error, it's same, same. Uh, error are also treated same way as values, yes. And 
when it comes to the reactive graph. So error propagates through the reactive graph exactly the same way as the regular values. The only difference is that uh, happens when an error hits an output or observer. Um, so yeah, th we have different like if if it's an imp with an input or if it's an active uh, expression, uh, we have this kind of error. This uh, this will be uh, what what he's simulating here. Uh, but there is another type where uh, it hits or it exists in the output or an observer. Uh, and the observer here, it means that um, the second building block or kind of the building blocks of uh, reactive uh, expression. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a different kind of the regular, uh, not, not regular, um, reactive expression. Uh, called like uh, it's it's uh, called like event or event reactive and event and reactive event um, called observers and we'll see how this the observe the, we have uh, this kind of observe function that uh, running behind the scene for all of them and it really you could use it to um, decouple things when you want to make it like as you want make make the dependency or change the dependency as you want in different object of or different reactive expression if it exists inside the reactive uh, events or reactive uh, not reactive or any observer in any observer uh, we'll touch on this after after uh, sooner yeah and um, so yeah, an error is an out output will be displayed in the app. Yes, yeah, so if it, it's if there is an error is the output itself, we'll see it in the app. If an error is the observer, this will will terminate the current session. And if you don't want this to happen, you will need to wrap it in try and catch, as similar as as R uh, when we're doing with uh, when we're writing R code. Uh, this uh, system powers re requires, which is uh, we used in chapter eight. Uh, which emits a special type of errors. And um, yeah, we have this by default, it will cause outputs to reset in their initial blank state. But if you use required uh, and cancel uh, and give it this argument, uh, cancel output true, they will preserve their current display. So it, it will display the same uh, uh, without caring about the error itself. Um, yeah. So, okay, on exit here, you talk here about on exit. I don't know if it's uh, exist here. Let's see. Okay, error abrogated through reactive graph just as values. Okay, we talked about this. Let's see. Sequence. If some error is present in the next function, observers and outputs to stop what they are doing, but not otherwise fail. By default, it will cause output to reset to their initial blank state. Yeah, we do, we've already talked this. I don't know what is sequence here. Is it all? It means that required, not sequence. It's like explaining mistake. Okay. So where does on exit work? Uh, on exit can be used on inside function bodies and in test expressions uh, or in a reactive expression or observer. And uh, when does on exit run uh, in function? The code in on exit runs after all the reset, uh, the rest, all the rest of the code has run. So it's like a final statement or after, uh, after, a chunk of code is running, then run at the, la the last one of them is on exit. So uh, it runs even if there is an error or warning, and you can have multiple calls on exit inside a function. Uh, use a true uh, so you can you, your call so you, so a call doesn't override an error one. Um, yeah, and I think that we have. Let's go to. Uh, I think we have an example for an exit. 
in section eight, chapter eight. So here you see here that uh, when we talk about uh, user feedback uh, chapter, so uh, we use an exit to remove this notification after uh, the reactive is finished execution. So this will uh, this will uh, execute after all of them are been done. So after reading a CSV, after and the ID is assigned, and then on a, uh, with with this ID, when when this ID is finished uh, creation of creating this ID, or this kind of um, yeah, it's called like uh, uh, show notification here, or is uh, is a function that I think they they yeah they create this function here. Yeah, they have a function that called show notification that takes uh, a message and a couple of, uh, uh, in, in shiny, of course, uh, a couple of uh, other parameters. And then it creates an, it returns an ID of this notification. And there is, in an opposite side, we have the remove a notification to, to, to delete or not in this, uh, like hide the, the notification that uh, pop up on the screen. So we said that here on exit, remove this notification, remove notification of this ID that we already created in, there, in this reactive, uh, and with add or, or equal true, uh, as we said that, uh, to not override one in each other, uh, we we add this kind of add equal true. Um, okay. Application. So set an R option, set an environment variable. Yeah, we could use. Um, this is the application of on exit. We could what we could possibly what is the use cases of it? So uh, set an R option uh, option and set an environment variable. Change a working directory. Create a file. Create a resource or an external system. I think we could also call the call a database or um, uh, connect to uh, close the connection on a database. For example, this would would we would what we do with um, with uh, context. Um, what's called? I think it's called the with statement in in Python, which is context uh, handle handler or something like that. Uh, it's the same kind of uh, concept in our own X. Okay, you have an option with the digits, and we said that with this option, uh, after this option is finished, like assign it, the we print the value at X after it. And that's what you see here. Okay. Okay. So, so let's see if it has observers. Yeah. So observers and outputs are terminal nodes in the reactive graph, and terminal, which mean which means like it's indicating the um, the directions uh, of the reactive graph or uh, controlling the, the, the outputs. So reactives cached and lazy and observers and or outputs, since an outputs here, yeah, it doesn't say that, but outputs is a special kind of observers. Uh, it, it actually like not returning, since it's not returning something, uh, uh, it just shows something in the screen uh, for us to, to see. Uh, it calls us, uh, it calls observers and the outputs for getful and eager. If they were lazy, nothing would get done. So uh, they don't they don't remember the current the the, the previous state of the uh, of themselves. So that's why if if something changes in the out uh, if in in the input, it has already it ha it has to change in the outputs uh, since it's great it has this kind of dependencies. Um, yeah. So let's see. Observe event is used for saving a file to a shared network uh, and sending a data to a web API, updating a database, printing a debugging messages to the console. Yeah, so observe event has this kind, I don't know if it's, it's, it's mentioning it here. It's kind, it has this kind of um, effect, which is called side effect. Um, and I want to discuss with you guys uh, how how you could like, uh, what do you understand about the side effect? Because it's, it's mentioned here, but it, 
it doesn't like go into the details. Uh, what is a side effect uh, exactly? I don't. I think it's uh, yeah. It mentioned somewhere in the book, okay? But it doesn't like uh, elaborate on on the side effect and how it's like uh, how it's been used in observe and observe event and reactive event. Uh, so uh, and I think it. I have like this mental model of it. But I want to 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 hear your um, your input first, and then I could like try to draw this mental model, uh, and and we could discuss it. So this um, so yeah, do you have any idea of of the, what is the side effect of a function or not a function? A side effect of the observed event. And what what is mean what is the meaning of it, like how it's why it's called solid effect. Hello, guys. You're him, that was me. So it's been a while since I've read this chapter, but I'm guessing because we're talking about the reactive graph that we could affect values before or after the effect, but I wasn't quite sure if that's what we're going for here. Um so what I what I'm pointing to is that um okay, so we have we have reactives as okay, let's let's make it. Sicker. Okay. Um, we have like a reactives and yeah, so we have reactive expressions uh, or reactive expressions, and we have like this called um, uh, observers. Okay. So we already know what is the reactive expression is like. Uh, reactive expression is something that get, get calculated uh, and ha have this kind of uh, dependency that it's an intermediate state or intermediate function that really returns something to us. Okay, so uh, it 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 has this kind of dependency. So we are, when we are re um, uh, drawing the reactive graph, uh, we already have the output and the input and the middle. Uh, in the middle state is uh, is a reactive uh, expression. So the reactive expression is already uh, the output is or is dependent on the reactive expression. So this is this is a dependency here, and uh, reactive expression is dependent on it could depend on other reactive expression or it, or it could depends on the input itself. So uh, this middle where or or uh, or you could call it um, an intermediate uh, like barrier or intermediate state. Uh, it has to be done through returning a value or uh, returning back to the, like giving a value, calculating something and giving it outside value. Uh, this is what I mean, but this is what what been done in the reactive expression. We already discussed this with Omer in the, in the last chapter. We said that what if what if we have the observed event? So what is happening? Since we are not changing or returning anything, we are not returning anything, sorry. Um, so how the reactive graph is showing that? We said that before in the, in the previous chapter, this actually uh, been, this actually been, uh, Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so um, yeah, sorry for that. Um, we have this some for for from the first one to the next one. Oh yeah, uh, we are simulating this with uh, creating this relationship between the input and output, and this what uh, what we see in the observers. Again, we 
we uh, the side effect that I'm mentioning here is the way which it's like changing something without returning a value. So you could change um, an outer scope or something in that is in is not in the scope of the function itself without returning a value. That's what called in programming, uh, like general programming is uh, uh, a side effect of a function. So it changes something outside the, the scope of its function, of its, uh, of its body. That's what's called like side effect. Uh, he didn't like mention this here, but uh, this is already existing in PyShiny and it's, it's mentioned uh, out there uh, in, in, the document, in their documentation. So I find it interesting if it, that he didn't like really point it out here uh, how this is done behind the scene because actually this is a, a programming phenomenon uh, uh, it's not like uh, yeah it's like it's well known if you, if you type side effect in Google and said that what how the function would would be would could categorized as a side effect it will said that uh, it could like uh, doing this kind of external stuff like. Uh, reading from a from a desk or uh, writing on the desk, and like any output I, I O operations that you could do with programming languages, you could do it with inside effect function. Um, that that inherit that uh, what inherit been inherited uh, uh, automatically in observe event and reactive event uh, uh, that exist in uh, in the in, in, in in shiny uh, observers, so yeah, that's what at least what this is what I understand from the um, the side effect of the function of from the observe function or and uh, observe event and event reactive. Um, but yeah, it's really really interesting. It's like it's, uh, I think they they have like uh, in in a shiny version of documentation they have this what, what's called as uh, explanation of your side effect um, so yeah uh, sorry if takes that if this takes some time but I I think this is uh, actually this is pretty interesting because it, um, it really explain why why this we treat this function differently than the normal function the, the normal reactive uh, uh, expression functions and we'll see now after this this will see observe function and then what is properties. Um, okay, so observe event again, since we said that this is dependent on the side effect, um, uh, since observe event is dependent on the side effect and it's creating the side effect, what is side effect? You see it, what it's used for, this is the side effect, okay? Saving a file to a shared network, this is, this is an eff a side effect for, uh, calling this function a, again, sending data to the web API, updating a database, all this kind of stuff is a side effect for using observe event. Uh, so yeah, uh, the value returned by observer is ignored. So yeah, no var no value uh, is returned in uh, in observe event or uh, reactive uh, event. Uh, and in the other side, outputs running outputs uh, creates an observer. Then uh, yeah, so. Since an output is a special kind of observer, observers uh, running outputs and in this way, see. Not, uh, working. Yeah, now it's working. Okay. Um, so running this this chunk of code, for example, having a text that we output it in the, uh, into the uh, in shiny in the server function, uh, this create an observer and uh, and for every time we create in it, like every time we assign uh, or create or, or doing this kind of assignment for for output, we creating an observer behind the scene, but uh, they can defect when they are not visible, so they don't have uh, to recompute. So uh, uh, outputs doesn't recompute uh, uh, on its own. It, it just, since they are dependent on something else, so it's, uh, this dependency should be fulfilled 
first. So uh, if it's dependent on this reactive expression or something, it should uh, calculate it first and then calculate itself as we mentioned in the, in the last chapter. Um, yeah, let's see what is observed, yeah. So observe event and reactive event is using this, what's called observe function behind the scene, okay? Observers and output use observe and observe sets up a block of code that is uh, run every time one of the reactive values or expression it uses uh, is upload is updated. So uh, when you use anything inside the observe event, it's created in the event. If you, if you use uh, a reactive value, for example, let's, let's, let's create an example, okay? Uh, if you use a reactive value, like this one here, uh, if you use um, a reactive a reactive function, which is like uh, an intermediate step. Okay, it's not, it's not working, why it's not working? Okay. So if you use the reactive uh, inside it uh, as well, it, it will create a dependency on it. So it would create dependency on anything that it uh, that that in reactive context or uh, or uh, or build on top of reactive expressions. Since reactive value is, is some kind of reactive expression behind the scene, uh, it uh, so any kind of reactive expression it will create dependency on it on it. So uh, this has happened when uh, for for example in this example we see here that um, we're having a message and we're having the uh, the why it's called so uh, we call the active uh, when we call the, uh, the uh, when the call when we call y and we set it for five for example since y is now ten uh, we call it five uh, that then it's uh, the message uh, the message function has been triggered and it it uh, it output it five if you change it when you, when you change it to four, set it to four, it change it, it the output changes with it. So it trigger with yeah, it's created this dependency on this kind of reactive value, uh, or reactive expression, so a special kind of reactive expression, uh, um, by the way. So uh, so yeah, it's great any kind of uh, any depend any kind of reactive expression, it will create a dependency on it. And let's see if. Now, yeah, so we have observe this, this observe function have some kind of properties. Every time you run the observe function, it creates an action that can be triggered. Yeah, that's what I talked about. Talked about. So in the next example, every time X changes, it creates another observer. So its value is printed another time. So yeah, we have the observe and we have an X, which is the reactive value. And we have an observe inside it, which is, print again, print uh, the, the X value. So for each time we are calling the, uh, the function X um, or setting the value for X, this will trigger uh, the, the observe function and the insider or the inner observe function as well. So let's see, uh, and again, since it's uh, it's it's some type of uh, a recursion, some kind of recursion. So it's function is it's called itself. Uh, this is what's called recursion. We uh, be calling again and again for each changes. We are triggering for each changes. So in the in the first one, we see here in the first uh, when we called the x two, uh, setting the value of x two. Uh, um, uh, the value here, it, uh, it shows the value here uh, when we call it. Uh, so, and so yeah, we have two values. This observe, yeah, so have, yeah, yeah, so this, this will call the X reactive value first. And we getting it, its value, but we didn't do anything with it, just getting it. And now we are, uh, printing it in the observe in the insider in the observe function. So we actually having like two calls, not one. And 
for every one we have, we, we create. So in this example, we have this x2, uh, when, we, when we set it to a two, uh, we're having two dependencies. So it printed two times. Um, this observe event trigger, when it, when it triggered, it triggers uh, this observe event, the insider, tr the insider one. And when, so yeah, we have two triggers. Uh, for every one of uh, for every one of them, uh, when we create when we run this, this is by, like an, uh, a previous step for for uh, uh, for for calling the observe uh, observe functions. Uh, so when we call it three times, when we call it with three, uh, it printed three times because this observe event get triggered once, and then it get triggered when this uh, when we get the value of this. And it get triggered again when uh, we, uh, for uh, for uh, for uh, for the inner uh, the inner observe. So yeah, it's a, it's it's a bit like not it's a bit complicated, but it's uh, actually I I want to say if why this is not four. Okay. Okay, so yeah, it, it it's it's a kind of recursion saying that uh uh, that we could do with uh, with observe. I don't fully understand how 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 it's printed like three times. I think we the, uh, it calculated the values due as a recursion itself. So it's, it's it preserves the first value. Uh, so when when it changed it changed one time here in this in this x when it, when it changes to two it's changed one time. So we have uh. We have one for X and one for uh, for the observe, uh, the second observe, and in the second time we have two in observe, two 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 in this observe like uh, two calls for this observe, or so three calls for this observe, and this is uh, the the one that get preserved. Uh, but yeah, I uh, yeah I don't fully understand it. With, because it, it doesn't have then show that that case for in in the book itself. So let's see. It's, it's say here that you should never ever uh, you should only ever create observers or outputs at the top level of the of your server function. Yeah. So that's creating an, a a recursion. It will get you confused. So yeah. Let's let's go to the next uh, slide and see. So yeah, to avoid creating the active dependency when not needed, we can use the function isolate. Uh, okay. Isolate or observe event or event reactive. So what has been told, told here, um, we have these two function that, that these two are, are interfaces that we already used, been using uh, all the time. Uh, they combine. I don't. I think we'll. It, it will talk. They combine the. Yeah. For example, this one. Uh, it it combines the um, uh, the observe with um, with isolate and for event reactive, it combines the re re reactive Blast plus isolate. So yeah, both of them are. Um, uh, it's like combining the two uh, for different cases, uh, but decoupling or making things that don't depend on each other. Uh, this built on top on uh, on the wrapped version of uh, of the observe event and the event reactive. Uh, so it's very important to know that. You could use the same functionality uh, with reactive and isolate to achieve the same thing as uh, event reactive, 
and you could as uh, um, you could as uh, like apply the same thing with observe and isolate to simulate the observe event. Um, yeah, and I think they will talk about this uh, in the next slides. If I'm not mistaken, okay, let's see. So using isolate function, for example, the next code creates an infinite loop because the observer will take a reactive dependency on X and count. And you see here that we have uh, list, the list type of reactive values. Uh, we have count and X uh, and we, we are, uh, here getting the value of x and getting uh, and changing the value of uh, of uh, of count to one so since this is changed and this guy get reactive dependency on them uh, it's changed inside the function observe itself this will be triggered and triggered and triggered infinitely since it depends on both uh, so since this count is changing over for every call it will uh, call again and again and again and and be in an effort uh, as we don't want to create this dependency based on uh, account we we can use isolate uh, and isolate it um, so isolate what it uh, yeah so it's a very simple function it says to shiny don't depend on this variable or don't don't depend on this reactive expression or reactive value okay so you could use it on any value or any expression, the active expression. When you don't want, um, when you change, something happen will in, something will get triggered. So in this case, in this example, we have an observe function and uh, the same example, the same example as before. But when we use isolate here, it will not create any active dependencies on the count, so it will not trigger. And we could, the code will continue to execute, will not be an infinite loop. And this is so very powerful. So you you could uh, like manipulate the uh, the the reactive graph using this kind of functions. I think isolate will talk about it. I think if it's uh, if you, if uh, if we want to change something in the uh, in the reactive graph, I think we will use isolate to not to create, uh, to, uh, to isolate or uh, break the dependency or for the active graph using this, this isolate. Um, so yeah, let's see. Uh, and yeah, with, uh, here we, yeah, it's, in, it's, it's just continue the code and it will run uh, flawlessly uh, since we, uh, we don't have this, uh, uh, the loop, infinite loop here. Okay, so. Let's see what else. Okay, so using the observe event, but if we need to isolate many variables in a script, it's better to use observe event uh, since it's been built or wrapped uh, and uh, which is equivalent to observe an X, isolate Y um, to get the same result. So yeah, as, as, as I said before, it's uh, uh, it has this inner, way uh, of implementing isolate uh, without the need for isolate function calls in the isolate function since it's being called uh, behind the scene uh, in, in the observe event itself. Uh, so this code is equal to, to the last to the last slide, this one. So it's very equal to this. Same same code but with a different syntax. So that's why it's it's recommended to use observe event then using the observe and with isolate because it's have this this wrapper is easy to use easier to use to than uh, the both functionalities both both observe and isolate uh, isol uh, independently uh, and we see here that you have this event reactive and on the other hand is equivalent to use reactive um, reactive isolate. Yeah, that's what we, what we talked about, I think. We have an example or not, no, yeah, as we don't have one. So observe an event reactive argument. We have this ignore null uh, to handle null values rather than ignoring any events that yield null. And we have this ignore init. 
Uh, and this ignore in it actually, uh, again, answers the questions that we have in the last session when we said that what is happening in the, uh, in the uh, first state when the app is running, first run for the app, uh, for the observers. Does it run first one time or uh, how it's get calculated or how, how it's been done? How is, hand, how is Shiny is, uh, is handling the, the observers or the observe event? Um, uh, in, in the observer itself, versus the reactive uh, expressions. We talked about the active expressions and said that uh, it doesn't calculate it first, as first. But for observers, this actually could, we could control with this kind of uh, argument. So ignore init, which is ignore initialization or uh, uh, like the, uh, not calculate once to avoid, if, it, if it's true, to avoid running the function uh, once when you create them. So this created like uh, this uh, after the app is running and uh, first the first run, it will create uh, the, the uh, or execute the function first one time. Okay. And we have this once variable also as well, with once argument. If it says it's true, it will run the handler only once. Yeah, it's the same, but uh, for uh, it's when when it will run. This is run for only once. This is will run one one time. Uh, it will run on initialization or in on app when your app start. So this is a difference. This would only run one time and just once, and that's it. This is will will run one time first, and then we it could run multiple time afterwards. This is a difference between uh, the both arguments. Um, so yeah, before I continue, did anyone have any question or something to ask about? We're talking about observers here. I think that they are not like very straightforward in how it, it, it explains them. But um, but yeah, again, if you if you understand this kind of side effect thing, you will like have this kind of mental model that you have a function, but uh, this function doesn't have to do anything with the reactive, re, re, the reactive context itself, but it doing, doing stuff that the outer scope, scope stuff, that the thing that the connection to the database, the connection to the API, uh, writing to the desk and, and reading from the desk. So uh, like normal R code, but uh, at the same time, uh, in Shiny, how it's, how you could implement this in Shiny, you could use this kind of uh, observers or observer event. Um, so yeah, anyone have any question about uh, observers? I think we have, good. Okay, let's continue. So I think this is an isolate. Yeah, so it's it's an interactive. Okay, let's see the next one. Yeah, so we talked about the reactive timer before in the chapter three, I think, and it have this kind of timer. It's you setting up a timer uh, to run the reactive to run the execution of the re or sorry, uh, create the reactive graph uh, after an amount of time, a specific amount of time in milliseconds. And um, you see here that we create a timer for uh, half a second. And we said that we have this reactive wait for half a second, then call this R B Y S, And same as this one. Uh, so yeah. I think this, this this example we talked about it before in the chapter three. Um, okay, you didn't say here what is uh, how we could define the reactive timer. So let's go to the book because it's this important um, time validation. 
Okay. Okay, so isolate is reduces the time for reactive graphics is unvalidated. Uh, so in this section, we talk about invalidation later. So it does the opposite. Uh, it lets you invalidate the reactive graph when you when no data has changed. So yeah, it enforces the reactive graph to recalculate it or be invalidated. Invalidated means that um, you remember the next the, the previous session when the node become orange or uh, yellow. That's what invalidation means, which is, which means that we actually making it unavailable or deactive, uh, and we are where we we are actually we re re trigger the re execution state when we're using this uh, invalidate later uh, function. So you saw this example in chapter three point five. Uh, okay, so with React timer, but the time has come to discuss the underlying tool. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if it's if here it's. Uh, Say this in here. Yeah. Okay, so we could like go with this. Um, so invalidate later, as I said, it's just re triggering enforces the, the reactive consumer to be invalidated, which means that we deactivated or in, in the, this kind of deactive state um, as we, we build the reactive graph before. Um, and we have this kind of two two uh, two inputs and two outputs and one outputs. Uh, and uh, so, for example, this kind of reactive graph. Um, if we said that this is invalidate trader, we could have this uh, invalidate trader here, and uh, like for in this one, for example, and it doesn't really affect any some kind of uh, like it doesn't have any relationship with the input itself, uh, other than it's uh, it doesn't have like a, a, a relationship between them, but it will re-trigger the execution, so it will turns, uh, it will like remove like we said that we have steps for invalidation uh, process to happen. We first like uh, remove the relationships, for and make this uh, the values for this reactive invalid, so it's will make it like orange or uh, yellow. Same as the output itself, since it depends on this kind of these reactives, and all this happens, and then we uh, again we uh, create the the new the new relations and create the uh, the new values for the reactives. All this kind of called a kind of a process called the execution phase or the execution phase, but it's, it's we are redoing it. So that's why it's called the re execution. Um, yeah, I have this was clear. Okay, so what we could use it for. So invalidate, we could use it for creating animations, for delaying, something to happen uh, like if you have this kind of uh, um, ba background in JavaScript you will have this kind of uh, way of creating animation in JavaScript is something like this where we uh, use the, the times to like uh, make this uh, pop up in after one well, one one second and then uh, take the this kind of ball or uh, spear and uh, like translate it or change its uh, its position in by that by that value x and y and yeah so on and so forth so it's the same as this but here because we are just uh, like controlling the time we are just controlling the time for the animation not as, not anything else we could use this for animate yeah, like simulating animation effect uh, with uh, showing notification and removing notification. And any other like uh, kind of component that you could use for say, like applying and saving. So yeah, um, 
what else? Yeah, connecting to the data sources outside the trinary active framework. Uh, yeah, so yeah, you could use this for, for example, I in in my last uh, uh, Pi Shiny project, I I use it for uh, connecting after the button is clicked, invalidate after one second to re-execute the 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 the, um, the, the, uh, the reactive graph, and save the table that I have in in the Shiny app into the database, which is DuckDB database. So I use this invalidate later to sim to just uh, like control the time when this will happen when a proton is clicked or something. And we have like example like this in the in the documentation, so it was uh, very useful. Um, yeah, so here we we created just ten fresh random normals every half a second using this invalidate. Yeah. Okay. Incremental cumulative. So yeah, with reactive, we we will doing this with uh, with observe is the same. But since it's creating this kind of uh, um, a dependency on some, <coughs> on some, again this is observed, not observed event or reactive event. This is observed, so it's created by default like a dependency on each reactive uh, expression in inside its body. Here we have the sum as a reactive value, <coughs> and we uh, we use isolate in it, <sighs> and uh, the isolate will uh, again will not will. We despise the uh, um, the dependency. I think it will not de de despise the dependency for for the the outer one. So it will still have dependency on it when it changed. Um. Yeah. Okay. Importing data. So to import data only when the data have been updated, you can use the reactive pole. So yeah, I, I use this to. Okay. Uh, in, again, in my last one, again in my last shiny project, I I did actually this using the reactive pole, uh, which is watching or monitoring files or changes in files. So if uh, if if you have the CSV file, if you have this kind of database file that's been saved in your local machine or something, you could set up reactive pole to to watch them their changes. For example, if your if your shiny app is writing uh, or adding rows to the column to the to the database, or adding rows to the CSV files or something like that, and we want to trigger to trigger some uh, functionality when any changes happen. For example, it, like upload this into um, or deploy the app or do something in. Uh, like, for example, could you could use it for uh, update uh, the table that has been displayed in the Shiny app itself for every change that happened. And uh, as well, you could save it somewhere else or uh, like deploy it in AWS or S3 object uh, storage, for example, uh, or in, in Azure, for example, as well. So yeah, you could do a lot of stuff with reactive pole, but its main usage, as I said, like monitoring or, and watching for any changes that happen in files. This is actually the the, the best use case for it. Um, did anyone of you like use this uh, this kind of reactive? Um, no, I think I I have not used it this way. No. So yeah, what's yeah, um, the reactive value and values and reactive val? I have played around with that. Oh yeah, so you you have used like reactive uh, event and event reactive and reactive mm -hmm. and just reactive, yeah, not observe, uh, observe and observe events. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, yes, this this could be useful for creating uh, such application for simulating what you could do in uh, Excel. Uh, in, uh, like replacing the functionality of Excel uh, uh, with the writing file and creating this kind of uh, interactive way of 
viewing Excel again, but you're simulating the, what is done in Excel, but uh, in Shiny. So yeah, you could use it uh, that way. That way, or again, I I said a lot a lot of usage. I, I use it for updating the Shiny app and uh, deploying stuff to the to the cloud something. So yeah, and you could watch uh, the changes over time automatically for every hundred uh, thousand here here it it watches uh, the change for every uh, every one second so it said okay shiny watch this file which is called data csv or the or uh, and uh, or it's called data csv dot csv and uh, for every one every one second watch if it's changed or not if it changed Automatically re-execute the reactive graph or recalculate the reactive graph. Um, so yeah, this is how it works. So, but for this simple example, we can also use reactive file reader. Yeah, we have this kind of reactive file reader to read, do the same thing for, as the reactive file. Um, let's see, long-running reactive. We already talked about. Okay. So yeah, but if you have the invalidation function on exit, we will make sure to run the check. Uh, yeah, run check after ending the process. Oh yeah, so we could run the check after end after the end of uh, the reactive itself. Uh, like we could do the invalidation after uh, after the reactive is finished executed, executing and uh, by the using this way. Okay, what is else? The number of milliseconds specified and validated is a pol polite request, not a demand. This is effective me effectively means that the invalidation might take longer than you expect. Yeah. So yeah, it, it has this kind of uh, problem of time accuracy. So that's what it that's what they talked about here. The number of milliseconds specified in validated is polite request, not a request. Or maybe doing other things that when you ask for invalidation to occur, so your request has to wait. Uh, this effectively means that the number is a minimum and invalidation might be take longer than you expect uh, when you use the invalidate later. Uh, so in most, cause, in most cases, this doesn't matter because the small differences uh, are unlikely to affect user perception of your app which is mean that the, the yeah, like there's not there's small differences when 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 when, uh, when reactive reactive happen or the, uh, the user reacting to the to the app itself uh, this is not taking any, like too much time so that's why it's it doesn't like show up this is a problem well so uh, yeah uh, however, it's in situation where many small errors will accumulate, you you should compact the exact elapsed time and use it to adjust your calculation. So yeah, we see and this here is how it's it fixes uh, using this uh, proc to time function to just uh, fix the like the delay that happened because of invalid data function. And yeah, so if you are not doing careful animation, feel free to ignore the inherent variation of uh, in in validate later. Okay, what else? Yeah, I think that's it. So yeah, it's it's a very like heavy chapter because it's having a lot of uh, new, um, like having new a lot of new concepts that we didn't like expose to in the last chapters. Uh, but it actually is showing us the differences, as I said, uh, in of observers faces reactive expressions. Very subtle difference, but it's really important to have this kind of mo mental model of how they are different. So reactive expressions mostly are doing, are, uh, are used for returning a value or having this kind of intermediate state that you use inside an output or something or somewhere else. But for observers, 
it's like a watchers and what something that watches something and, and wait until it change and get triggered to change or, or get triggered to change something outside of it, it's, it's inner scope which is called the side effect uh, and that's by creating a file reading a database calling an api and yeah so on and so forth so yeah i think this is this is it for this chapter does anyone have anything to add Okay, so thanks to everyone for attending. And I think we could like uh, review this one again in the next chap in the next chapter because it's happening a lot of stuff that we we come in, we come across, but we explain it quickly. So we'll try to go back to it when we under we when we uh, discuss the escaping the graph chapter. Um, okay. So yeah, see you later, guys, and uh, have hoping you're having a wonderful day. Yeah. Okay, thank Bye. you so much. Thank you. Thank you.